All right, welcome back. We're coming to you live from Build 2019. We're here at the Washington Convention Center. And I have some special guests with me today that uh, we're going to introduce you to. So we have some folks from the .NET Foundation that are joining us today. So why don't we, why don't we kind of go down the line and have everybody introduce themselves to us? So what do we, what do we start in the end here? Yes, I'm Clint Patterson, the Ecosystem Manager at DNN Corp. OK. I'm Beth Massey. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for the .NET Platform. And I'm on the Board of Directors for the .NET Foundation. Right, OK. Hi, I'm Phil Hack. I'm on the board of the .NET Foundation as well, and I'm just independent these days. OK, awesome. So, so why don't we start in the beginning? Right, there might be some folks that are watching, and they don't know what the .NET Foundation is or what does it do. So why don't we start to talk about what, it, what, what exactly is the foundation? So the .NET Foundation, or any really software, open source software foundation, is about, um, about protecting and providing services, all kinds of things for open source projects. Okay. Uh, at the .NET Foundation, we provide a ton of services for projects that aren't related to actually writing code. Okay. Developers want to focus on writing code, and we make it really easy to provide services around those things. Code signing, CI, CD, okay. storage, all kinds of virtual machines, compute, that kind of stuff that they need. Um, and then we also provide financial and legal help and marketing yeah. services and that sort of thing. So we're, we're all about, like, um, uh, we're center of gravity of the .NET open source community and ecosystem. And we're about the survival of these projects, the flourishing of the community, um, you know, you know. Uh, no, that's, a, that's a great answer. You, I, I don't really. I don't know. <laughs> that, just, yeah, so it's really about kind of insurance in a way, sure. making sure that these projects uh, survive. Uh, everybody depends on open source projects in sure. their own projects, in their own software. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that those projects survive so that your software does too. Sure, sure. So I know one of the things that I love when I went to the .NET Foundation website is as I'm scrolling down, I see, you know, browse projects, I see meetups. So it seems like it's a really community focused type of organization. Right, like the community is front and center of everything that you do, right? Is that, would you say that's true? That's correct. I mean, we, we basically pay the meetup fees for those meetup groups around the world. I think we have like um, over 200,000 members of just those meetup groups around 58 countries or something like that at this okay. point. Um, so if, you, if you're running a .NET meetup out there, you know, uh, get, a, get a hold of us. Uh, go, go to .NET Foundation.org, the website, and you can apply to just say, hey, I would like to be part of the .NET Foundation. That's awesome. So yeah. if I had an open source project, what does it take for me to have my project be a part of the .NET Foundation? I think that's a good one for Clint. Well, so, I mean, whenever you want to get into the .NET Foundation, you have to submit your project. And then that goes to the board, who then reviews the project. And I'm not sure the exact criteria by which it's judged. Uh, I think it's like if it's got some traction in the community. We're looking uh, for some healthy projects in, sure. in general, right? You know, when you, when you have a a project and you approach us at the foundation, we're looking for, like, what's your community? Yeah. How do you interact? What's your governance model? Um, .NET Nuke is a pretty big project in the foundation. Um, and we don't dictate the governance of it. You guys manage it yourself. But we want to make sure that, you know, it's a healthy project. And, you know, if it needs help, maybe they need to work on some things before we can accept them. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. So I know we've had some recent updates with the foundation new board members and things have changed in terms of the governance model. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I take that one, I guess. Um, so yeah, we recently had a public elections for uh, uh, people to be on the board of the directors. Okay. And so now it's, uh, previous to that, I believe it was three Microsoft employees, right? Who were running the whole board. Mm -hmm. And now it's uh, members of the community. And the idea behind that is like, it, it, you know, the Dunnett Foundation really needs to move to be community owned. Yeah. Um, it's a big part of it being a healthy, independent uh, foundation. Because not a lot of people realize that it's actually an independent organization from Microsoft. Obviously, Microsoft's the biggest contributor. Um, but sure. if .NET open source is going to do more than just thrive, but actually uh, just survive, but actually thrive, it has to be really driven by the community. Uh, that means getting more corporate sponsors, for example, not having Microsoft be the only funder. It means getting the open source community more involved. Um, when you look at other open source foundations, so you know, previously I used to work at GitHub, and we had a, access to sort of the broad open source community. And what we found is that you know, the communities that survive aren't totally uh, subsisting or beholden to a single entity, right? Yeah. Um, there's kind of like your immune system. A, you, know, you get exposed to a lot of things. You get stronger. Yeah. And so I think for the .NET Foundation, that's going to be important for its futures to 
to grow it. So what we will be doing as board members is trying to, uh, you know, none of us are paid and, and none of us, and we all have day jobs. Sure. So our goal is going to be to form groups, uh, enlist the help of the community, and really drive things forward. Uh, not a lot has happened yet, partly because we're still figuring out how do we even coordinate with each other yet. Sure. You know? We've only had two meetings since the election at this point. Right, so, right. Yeah. right. So, like, if you haven't seen anything happening, it's partly because we're trying to figure out, like, I mean, to the level of, hey, should we? So, I've, obviously, I'm going to suggest we all, let's use a GitHub repo <laughs> to coordinate everything. Yeah. Uh, everything through pull requests, because that's what I like to do. But, um, obviously, I need everyone else to agree with that or pick a better model. Yeah. I really like some of those changes because, you know, one of the things that I've always heard is the .NET Foundation is Microsoft's foundation, right? Because, you know, .NET came from Microsoft and, it, you know, it originated as a Microsoft product. But I think it's very clear to see over the years that .NET has grown to be bigger than just Microsoft, right? Like, you know, we have Samsung products that run .NET on their televisions and their appliances and whatnot. You know, you can run .NET on various cloud providers and, you know, all mobile phones and different products. So right. it's good to see all of these folks kind of coming together and being a part of the foundation and being able to have some input into the direction of where um, some of the stuff is going. Yeah. And I think you can kind of see that in the diversity of our board. You know, um, uh, I am appointed by Microsoft, so Microsoft will always have a stake in the .NET Foundation. But it's yeah. nice to see the rest of the six is elected yeah. from different companies, Google, uh, well, uh, independent, independent, but you know, a yeah. lot, lot of GitHub love over here. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, really interesting to, go to see where we go with this because um, it's, it's kind of new for the, it's a new era for the .NET Foundation related. Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. So, so outside of the foundation, I know you could be a .NET Foundation member. And I'm going to say something, and I don't want you to judge me for this. <laughs> I am not yet a .NET Foundation member. Ooh. That's so come um, on. I'm going to do it today. Like, as we okay. get off of stage today, I'm going to go to my machine. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to become a member. But what, why don't we tell the folks, like, like, why would I want to sign up for, to be a member of the .NET Foundation? Like, what do I get? Like, what does it mean? Like, what's a part of that, 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 that existence? Do you want to take that one? Yeah, so we get that question a lot at the booth. And the first thing that John Galloway asks is, well, do you care about you know, .NET and open source? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of like the higher level question. Mm -hmm. uh, then when you become a member, then you're able to vote on the board of directors. And uh, so it, it, it kind of helps you find a way to, to give back, but also have a say-so in the strategic direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And one of the things I think we'll be doing as a board is figuring out, well, what more could we add to that, right? Which is... Um, there's a whole set of services we could provide. Um, one of the examples I've been talking a lot about lately is if you're familiar with NPM, there's this package called Event Stream, uh, like 140 million downloads a week, and it was recently compromised because the maintainer kind of got burnt out, had too many packages, gave access to someone, uh, gave con uh, commit rights to someone else who had done some commits but hadn't really been vetted. That person does what anyone does when they hijack uh, someone's computer, which is install a Bitcoin miner. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I look at that and we think, well, what, who could help these maintainers who are burnt out and maybe can't vet people or, or need support? And I think that's the role of a foundation. If you could imagine, like, you're a maintainer, you're overburdened, I mean, as they all are, uh, you need some support. You know, we'll be looking at what is a reasonable way that a foundation could provide support for maintainers so that... Um, you know, they don't feel so overworked and overburnt out. Sure, sure. And I know specifically, so we're talking about open source projects. I know historically .NET and .NET developers haven't been as, as deeply entwined in open source. But I noticed over the years, like, we've seen that change a lot. Like, we've seen it started with, like, ASP.NET, MVC. Mm -hmm. And I know you were a part of that, like, initially, like, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And then now we're seeing more and more open source not only coming out of Microsoft, but, you know, it's been even included inside of the product. And I think that's important now because it kind of shows us that, you know, whether you're an enterprise or small business or maybe I'm just a hobbyist and I'm building stuff, yeah. you know, open source affects everybody, right? And so we need to have a way that we can all contribute and make sure that it's sustained, it's maintained, make, you know, make sure, ensure the, the longevity of these projects as they continue to grow. Absolutely. I think it really started with kind of the cultural shift within Microsoft um, yeah. and our, our, our customers are starting to make that cultural shift as well. It, yeah. it, it'll take time. Um, a lot of large enterprises, for instance, rely on Microsoft's support for the .NET platform, and yep. that doesn't go away, and that doesn't change. You know, just be Microsoft is the lead maintainers of the .NET platform, right? Yep. Um, so I think that there is some 
fear and FUD, really, uncertainty and doubt about like what's open source at some of sure. the, like the higher levels of organizations that have relied on the .NET framework for a very, very a long time, right, on closed source software. So um, yeah, I think it's kind of the job of what I'd like to do on the board is to to see how we can kind of change the perception at more of the C-level enterprises and try to try to get more corporate sponsors to care and fund us so that we can do a lot more things for these projects and for the ecosystem. And I think that's an important note that you bring up. So, like, you're not a for-profit entity. No, we're a non-profit. Right, you're a non-profit entity, so that means that, you know, anybody could contribute, <coughs> excuse me, anybody can contribute to the foundation and be, become a sponsor, right? That's correct, and we have to make sure that we use the money and we tell everybody where we're using it and they know where it's going and we, you know, we're a legal entity with right. you know, the United States government, we pay taxes, all that stuff. So um, that, that is just sort of the basis of like how you st we stood up the foundation in the first yeah. place, right? That was like the first step. Um, now we're, like I said, we're like on this next set of like, th these next few years are going to kind of be like the real journey for the .NET Foundation. We're finally got all that stuff in place. We have a board now. Now we need some money to do stuff, you know, and sure. we, need, we need to figure out how we're going to convince our, like, the the, the giant companies that rely on .NET to care as well, and sure. that's going to help us too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think that's been a big theme just in open source as a whole. Like uh, I saw this at GitHub a lot where um, companies are very easily willing to use open source, yeah. um, but they're not as willing to contribute back. Yeah. And when you look at things like um, how some of the critical infrastructure of the Internet is built on open source that is run by volunteers who are stretched thin, like uh, they're you know, not too long ago, SSH or SSL had vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And it's a skeleton crew working on these things. And when yeah. you realize how brittle that is and how much that affects, that should scare you. And yeah. my hope is that through, you know, not just the .NET Foundation, but all these foundations, that we can encourage these companies and maybe provide uh, pathways and help education on how do you contribute back? How do you fund critical pieces of infrastructure that you depend on so that they don't run into this and break? Right. Because, yes, it's you know, it may cost you some money, but how much does it cost you if SSH is broken, you sure. know, or SSL? So that sort of thing, I think, is really important for foundations to get involved with. Sure. And, and you know, open source is, is, is more than just, like, us writing code, right? Like, it's a culture, it's a mindset, you know, it's a set of core values about how we collaborate and work with each other and, and, and essentially create software. Hmm. What, do you, what do you think that change needs to start from within an organization? Is that something that starts from the engineers, or does that start at the top level? Like, like how do we... Like, if I'm an employee and I say, hey, I think we should become a part of this, I want to be a part of this movement, and I want to contribute, like, like where does that start? It's from both sides, both ends. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you're only going to have so much success um, on one side or the other. Yeah. I've heard both stories uh, where, you know, they're, developers are just doing it under the radar. You know, yeah. that, that, they're doing it, but that's not great because of Phil's point, right? Sure. Or the, there's a mandate that it must happen and then it doesn't actually happen because the developers don't know how to do it, right? right. So it really, and, you know, and a lot of it has to do with just changing perceptions of, of your, your legal department needs to actually embrace it as well, you know? So there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of, I think, cogs in the machine that have to kind of happen and pull together. But, um, it, you know, it happened at Microsoft. It can, if it can happen at a company like Microsoft, it can happen at any company. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. That's awesome. So we're running out of time a little bit, but, like, do you have any closing words that you want to leave the audience? Anything that you want to let them know about? Any cool projects or any calls to action you might have? I would say get involved. Yeah. Okay. Please join the foundation if you've, if you've done anything. You ran a meetup, you, like, changed a documentation, you made a pull request, you can be a member of the .NET Foundation, and please join. I feel that was a jab at me a little bit. I promise, I swear please to God. Join. At the end of this, I'm going to go and I'm going to sign up, I promise. Right. I had someone today just kind of jab me a little bit about, like, hey, I haven't seen any movement, and, you know, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, and I was like, you know, thank you. I need a little bit of fire lit under me, and I think that's really helpful to come, with us, come to us with your feedback. Uh, what would you like to see happen? Uh, what are things that we should be doing to better support the open source community on .NET? Sure, awesome. Well, thank you all so much, man. I really appreciate you all coming on. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. So you heard it from our panel. Make sure you go to the .netfoundation.org. You know, take a look at the membership. Take a look at some of the cool projects that they're working on and, and contribute because, again, open source affects all of us today when we're, as we're building our software. So thank you all so much. We appreciate it. And, you know, have a good day.